I don't mind that type of communication, especially with you all being older. Uh, I was telling some of the first kiddos who came in that I'm a I'm a fourth and fifth grade teacher, so I have to mute my students or they will be out of control. But I have a feeling that you all, I would like you to feel comfortable to communicate and to ask questions or to, to give an example of something. Um, so feel free to hop on there. I miss being in grade school. <laughs> Oh, there are some good things and some bad things. So yeah. I take with the good with the bad. All right. So we are talking about acrostics today. Um, acrostics are something that I always think, oh, that's the easiest one. That's the first one that you learn. But Miss Blosser reminded me that not everybody knows things about poetry. So um, you might be learning it for the first time. So I'm wondering... I'm going. Okay, I'm wondering how many of you have. So, give me a smiley face if you are like really good with acrostics and you've written more than five. If you, a middle face, if you know what they are, but you might have written one. A frowny face if you've never heard the word acrostic before. All right, so a couple of you are like writing them every day and then some of you are, you know, you know what they are. So I feel like I remember them in grade school and just as being like a pretty simple one. So we're gonna do a variety. We'll start with simple and move to a little more complex and then to the most complex of the acrostics. So again, if you were not here, actually give me a check mark if you were here last week for haikus and an X if you were not. Okay. Okay. Great. I'm sorry, Miss Blosser. Well, let me collapse that because I'm just on the one screen right now. So my little chat box is so small. You're fine. Um, recording of last week. Okay, thank you. Perfect. So National Poetry Writing Month, um, and somebody had just said that they did National Novel Writing Month in November with Ms. Blosser. So it stemmed actually off of National Novel Writing Month. So it was originally inspired that way, but instead of writing a full length novel over the course of a month, the goal is to write a poem each day for the entire month of April. So 30 poems throughout the month of April. This is our fourth annual celebration of Na Napo Rimo, which stands for National Poetry, Poetry Writing Month. So be sure to join throughout the rest of the month for prompts, submissions, lessons on different types of poetry. So you can stay involved by joining the weekly hosted poetry workshops like this one. They're Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, so the same time um, each Wednesday. So there's two more. Is that correct, Ms. Blosser? Two more. So there was one last week, and then there's two more. And don't forget to submit your poetry for Keystone's fourth annual poetry anthology. Um, anything else to add, Ms. Blosser? Nope. I will say I've gotten lots of submissions so far from you guys for the anthology. Uh, and I want to thank you guys. I haven't responded to everybody, but know that I am compiling them. And then I will email you guys out the finished book once it's done. It'll also be available for you to share out with your families on the various medias as well. All right, cool. So today we're getting into... A little pointer here. We're going to, I mean, mostly we're focusing on acrostic poems. Okay. But before that, I want to talk about poetic features, figurative language, um, just because it's important when you are writing poetry to keep those things in mind. Now, lots of poems don't have specific constraints and rules that you have to follow. It should be what you feel and what you want to write about. But depending on the poem you're writing, there are some rules and regulations. So you want to make sure you understand those things. So we will learn about acrostic poems. We're going to work on one together first, and then I'll have you create your own and we can share at the end. Okay. So if at any point you have a question, you can raise your virtual hand and I will call on you. Or if you want to pop on the microphone, you can just try not to 
interrupt right as I'm going through things. Sometimes it's hard to hear when the microphones are talking over each other. All right, so keeping in mind, poets are limited in the materials that they can use when they're making poems because there are some rules Otherwise, you're writing a story, right? So it has to have those elements that are going to make it poetic as opposed to just writing a narrative story. So they're kind of limited to, to those things. It has to sound right to the listener when they read it out loud. Often poetry is meant to be read out loud. There are poetry readings that you go to, right? You've probably heard of poetry readings, open mic nights, to hear the poetry because often the sounds and the way that those poems are read really make a difference in the meaning of the poem. Hi, Najee. Welcome. They also must have a meaning that's clear and thought provoking. So that's kind of tricky to do. Sometimes poems aren't totally clear. Sometimes it leaves a little bit, I mean, they become thought provoking because it leaves a little bit to the imagination and for one person to interpret one way and somebody else to interpret another way. Um, but it is important that you get, you try to get your point across clearly with your choice in words. They must be arranged in a way that's easy to follow, but also helps the reader understand. So we want to make sure that the reader's understanding or your point of your poem is lost, right? So we want to arrange it in a way that's easy to understand and easy to hear and see the meaning. And then the biggest part, in my opinion, is that it should be encouraged to use deep thoughts or emotions because that's what we're trying to get out when we write poetry. Sometimes it can be real simple, you know, roses are red, violets are blue, right? Those, those real simple poems, but often the deeper poems really um, try to get your thoughts and emotions out. However, at the same time, staying simple, right? So if you were here for haikus, haikus are super simple. They are, <coughs> they follow a very specific pattern, 575, right? But often, and Miss Blaster said you did a lot with the nature and that that's pretty, that can be pretty deep and pretty powerful, even in those short three lines for a haiku. So all those things you have to keep in mind to write poetry. Um, so rhyme and rhyme scheme. The first thing I think of when I think of poems and probably most of us think of rhyming. Obviously we know that poems don't always rhyme but a lot of times they do. And so rhyming means that it ends with the same sound, but begins with a different sound. So like dog and hog, right? Duh and huh. They both end in og, but they have different starting sounds. So that's the rhyme, which I'm sure you have learned before, but just to reiterate. And so now rhyme scheme is the pattern of the rhyme in the poem. So they're arranged in these things called stanzas. So stanzas can be two lines, they can be four lines, they can be six lines. Often we talk about two lines or four lines. They're called couplets and uh, quatrains, right? Quatrains, yeah. Woohoo! Look at me pulling that out. Oh, good. So hopefully this is something you've also heard about. Um, oftentimes we learn about this year after year in English, right? And you learn a little bit more each year. Good, good. So a rhyme scheme, usually the rhyme, and not always, but usually the rhymes at the end of the line in the stanza. So we might have letters X and Y to represent lines that don't rhyme. And then in quatrains, we might have something the most, I would say the most common is A, B, A, B. Um, and then there's also A, B, B, A. And I'll show you an example of what I mean when I say that. So here's rhyme scheme. This is an example of A, B, A, B. The A's rhyme, the B's rhyme. So as you can see in red, we've got the two A lines. So this is A, B, A, B. The A's rhyme, the B's rhyme. Roses are red, violets are blue. You've been in my head because I love you. Okay, red, head, blue, you. We've also got A, B, B, A. And I found this one hard, I, so I wrote this one. But I found it hard for some reason. I don't know what it was. It was when I read it out loud to myself, it didn't sound right. But you see the A's are the first and fourth. So they're on the outside like the sandwich, like the bread. And then inside the bread are the two B's. So running wild, dancing, prancing, life of a child. So the, the last lines rhyme and the middle lines rhyme. 
Any questions about rhyme and rhyme scheme? There are lots of different types of rhymes and rhyme schemes. Lots and lots. <laughs> okay. All right. So the other things we want to consider, and we're going to get into figurative language. The first couple aren't quite figurative language, but they go along with some things to think about when you are writing poetry. One of my favorites is alliteration. And what alliteration is, is a re repeated consonant sound. So consonants are all the things that all the letters other than vowels, right? Other than A, E, I, O, U. So any repeated sound at the beginning of words that are placed close to each other. For example, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Lots of repeated consonant for the letter P. Slim pinioned swallows sweep and pass. So you'll see slim swallows and sweep. And actually even pass you're hearing that S sound at the end there too. So those kind of go along with that. Yeah, tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are a great example of alliterations. But you don't always have to have, you know, every single word has the same consonant. It can just be a couple right next to each other and it really makes it sound good. Makes it sound snappy. The barbarians broke through the barcade. Barricade. Barricade. Barbarians broke and barricade. Then there's kind of the opposite of alliteration. It's called assonance. It's a repeated vowel sound in words that are placed near each other. So, you know, A-E-I-O-U, sometimes Y. And they're usually placed on adjacent lines, okay? On lines that are touching or side by side or, you know, on top of each other. I feel stressed and restless. Stre eh, eh and re eh, estless, right? You hear that E sound, the short E sound. The dapper lad chatted to the other happy chap. What vowel sound do you all hear there? Good. Yep. A. That ah, right? The short A sound. Johnny went here and there and everywhere. Go slow over the road to nowhere. And we're hearing O here, the long O sound. So alliteration and assonance. Now let's talk about a couple of bits of figurative language, just a few, and I'll go fairly quickly so we can get started on our activities. An onomatopoeia is a natural sound that sounds like, so the, the word is written the same way almost that it sounds like pop. Right when I when I say pop, it's almost spelled the same way that it would sound if you're popping popcorn. The clang of the pots and pans woke the baby. The wolves howled at the moon. Clang, howled, zoom went the race car as it sped past the finish line. The bacon sizzled in the pan. Onomatopoeia is my favorite figurative language, by the way. Simile makes a comparison between two things, or at least two things, and it uses the words like or as, okay? So it's making comparisons that way. Yes, exactly. So uh, often they could be actions, right? You, you, you would think of them as actions, but they also sound the same way that they are spelled. The desert was as dry as a bone. We are comparing dry and bone or dry and um, dry, dry and bone to desert. So the desert being dry as a bone. Her tempers were like an uncontrollable storm. We're comparing tempers and storm. He's as cool as a cucumber comparing the guy to a cucumber or being cool like a cucumber. I don't even really know how that makes sense. I guess it's cooling, but it's a it's a term we use or we used to back in the day. Rain plastered the land until it was shining like hammered lead. So the the land was shining like hammered lead because of the rain. <laughs> All right. Metaphors are very similar to similes, except that their comparison does not use like or as. Okay. So they compare two things that often are not actually that similar. 
and they'll compare them without like grass. The wind was a torrent of darkness among the gusty trees. Obviously, the wind actually wasn't a torrent of darkness, but we're comparing it to being a torrent of darkness. Her fingers danced across the keyboard. And this one, this example, which wasn't one of mine, um, I kind of thought of this more like um, a personification, which I'll explain in the next slide, but it also works. So we're comparing fingers to something that can dance, right? We're comparing fingers to dancing items. And his stomach was a twisted storm of butterflies. So his stomach actually wasn't a bunch of butterflies, but it felt like that, right? So they're making that comparison. So per personification, and this is why I thought of this one, the fingers dancing. Fingers don't actually dance, right? We can move them like they're dancing, but fingers don't dance. And that's giving a human characteristic to an inanimate object, animal, or abstract idea. And I guess fingers aren't inanimate, so maybe that's why it doesn't fit in there. But for example, as I climbed the stairs, the staircase groaned as if it, as if awoken from a long sleep. So staircases don't actually groan. They might make a noise like it sounds like they're groaning, but they don't actually groan because they're inanimate. The days crept by slowly, sorrowfully. Well, there's an alliteration, slowly, sorrowfully. So they crept by. Days don't actually creep. They can't move. They didn't actually creep by. Seaweed snatched at his legs as he tried to swim away. Seaweed can't snatch, it is a plant. It's not going to snatch onto you, um, but we imagine it grabbing. I don't know if you've ever been in the ocean, but it feels like it's snatching you. It's bringing something to life to give us more of an imagination in, in what we're reading. All right, so that takes care of the pre, the preliminary stuff. We're going to talk about syllables quickly so we can understand rhyme and rhyme scheme and you know how long lines should be depending on rules and regulations. So uh, I just want to make sure there aren't any questions before I move on from there. I think we're all here and good. Okay. This is probably something that's quite, uh, you learned quite a while ago, but it's important and the same thing with rhyme and rhythm and the amount of syllables, like for example, haikus, this was an important one in haikus. There are five syllables in the first line, seven in the second line, five in the third line. So syllables are how many beats are in a word. So when we talk about it, we can literally clap to a beat to a syllable. The word cat has one beat, cat. My lines are not straight. I'm going to get an actual line out cat one beat one syllable cat right two beats two syllables running so we've got run ning two syllables and three syllables favorite three beats three syllables right fave or it my lines are shaky today all right, so let's move into it. We're going to do this now. Acrostics are poems where each line of the poem begins with a letter from the topic or theme word. So sometimes the name of the poem, okay? So each line is going to begin with a different letter of the name. And I'll show you an example of that in a second in case that doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to rhyme, but it can. And each line can be a word related, should be. A word related to the theme or a full sentence so it needs to be related to the theme it can just be one word or it can be an entire sentence or it can wrap around and all weave together and i'll show you examples of all three of those so here's cat this is an acrostic the title of the acrostic is cat this is just one word this is this is something like um Maybe, you know, a first, second, third grader, so we'd introduce an acrostic to them, right? And and anybody can just do one word. That's totally fine because you can be really creative with the word choices. But this is how we would introduce this type of poem. It does sound like a cross, you're right. So cat, cuddly, most of them. Athletic, most of them. <laughs> Timid, 
some of them. So these are words that I think of if I think of my one cat. Um, he was cuddly. He was athletic, but a little bit tim timid as well. So all of these words describe a cat or describe, you know, cats in general. There's C, cuddly, A, athletic, T, timid. There's your acrostic. So that one's a, li a little simple, right? If we get into going for a full line, for example, say this one's called school, okay? First line is such an early start to the day. See how it starts with S, but we're doing a whole line doing a complete sentence. Or if you don't want to do a full, a complete sentence, it can be a few lines or a few words. It doesn't have to be a full sentence. You can play around with the length as much as you want. Oh, can I eat lunch yet? Good. I love that you're already thinking about it because we're going to do one together. So it'll be perfect. I have a feeling that I'm going to, yeah, they are very versatile. You're exactly right. I have a feeling you guys are going to just take it away with the collaborative one can't seem to wake up homework stacked in my folder opening book after book oh man did i finish logging off now all right so you can see you know this isn't a complete sentence but and this one has punctuation it can have punctuation it doesn't have to have punctuation they can rhyme i did not rhyme any of these lines i didn't i chose not to um, but you could rhyme them that would be fun too and you could do a rhyme scheme these two could rhyme these two could rhyme these two could rhyme however you want to so there's a lot of freedom with it the only real stipulation is that you need to have each line start with whatever the theme word is Okay. And then if you really want to get fancy pants with it, you can make the whole thing read as though it's one whole story or one whole paragraph or one whatever you're going for. So this is called lake and we read it as one flowing sentence or a couple. Lots of people gather around the giant watery hole knowing that it is the only escape from the sun except when the day is done. So we're talking about a lake in the poem. Lake is expressed here at the beginning of each line, but the whole thing goes together and you read it as one instead of, of as separate lines. So you could get into that as well. These lines could also rhyme. That's totally up to you. Okay, so that is the gist of an acrostic poem. I'm going to get a little bit of a pulse check here, see how you feel about the explanations and give you a chance to ask questions if you have any at this time. That's right, it is a poem inside a word, isn't it? Okay, good. Everybody's looking good here. You seem like a sharp group, but I just wanted to make sure. So let's try one together then, okay? So we can, we can actually try a couple if you want to. Uh, you're gonna have to bear with my writing with this online pencil here. Um, so I'm gonna take the first topic that I see in the text chat. It could be about anything. Ideally, it's about something that a lot of us would know about. So like maybe an overarching topic that we all feel comfortable with. For example, maybe not Fortnite because I don't know that much about it. I'm learning, but maybe you guys would do well with it. <laughs> so any, if, okay, anime is great. Miss Blosser will eat that up. All right, A, N, I am going to use the text tool for the rest of it. M, E. Okay. So then what we're going to do is I'll just let you throw out ideas. Give me the letter. This bosser is awesome, isn't she? I'll give you, or you give me the letter and you just tell me what you want to say. So we can start with just like one word. We can move on. Okay, action. Good. And you don't have to go in order. So if you come up with something for the rest of it, that's totally fine too. small. Can I make that bigger? Nope. I can't. Hmm. Okay. 
exciting. Okay. Naruto. Menacing. Okay. The last one I see is inevitable. So one of the things to think about too is that what we want the reader to understand when they're reading an acrostic poem, even though it's it's a can be a real simple poem, we want the intention to be clear. So when I if I don't know what anime is, and I see this poem about anime, and I see these these descriptions, I think oh, okay, it's something action. I don't know what Naruto is. What makes it inevitable? What makes it menacing? What makes it exciting? So those are things that I would wonder to myself because I don't actually know that much about anime. I know enough. But but what would be some ways that we could change this to make it maybe a little bit more explanatory, right? So I want to explain to my reader what those things are. So could we take anime and could we address it? Or actually, maybe we try a different word. Um, the action is what makes it inevitable. Okay. So maybe even something like action makes it inevitable. Adding on to the word action might be helpful too. Make the descriptions more active instead of passive. That's a great idea too. Yeah, so let's try. Let's, let's, uh, I don't know whether they're so small. Oh, that's bizarre. Okay, hold on. Bear with me. Letting me. Let's, uh, I'll take another word, but we're going deeper. Thank you, Bridget. I miss Wasser. What'd you do? Did you highlight the whole thing and delete? No, I just clicked the three dots at the top and then select clear page. <laughs> Did I know that was there? No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Maybe I did. I just haven't used it. Mm. Um, okay, summer. I like that. Let's go with summer. That's one we're coming coming up on summer. So I'm actually I'm gonna go back to my pencil for summer. So now I want more than one word. Try to give me a sentence, or even if it's a couple words describing it, more than one word to talk about summer. Summertime. I love that song. <laughs> That's a good one. Surrounding sticky heat. You know what I like about that one? Is that we've got some alliteration. And it's really descriptive because I think of sticky heat like, okay, you know, you've got, you're stuck to your clothing or wherever you're sitting, you're sweaty, right? That's what I think about when I think of summer. All right. Oh, sorry. A lot. You guys are going too fast. Mary. I lost some of the memories make experience. I like that. I have such good memories of my summers. met some of my best friends during the summer memories make experience uh mosquitoes buzz around that's a good one they show do hmm there's Sorry, I know I'm close to the screen. I'm having a hard time with that. <laughs> All right. 
Use up sunscreen. Good. Love it. Use up sunscreen. Awesome. Under cool canopies we seek. That's a good one. Sorry, I'm just taking the first ones I see. Memories wherever you go. That's also a good one. Remember your snacks. That's right. Remember your snacks. I'm going to get that one. Really nice. Remember your snacks. Yeah. And then let's see what else we got. Everyone. Every kid laughing and playing. Perfect. Okay. Sorry if I didn't get to yours. But there's our acrostic. Look at that. Surrounding sticky heat. Use up sunscreen. Memories make experience. Mosquitoes buzz around. Every kid laughing and playing. Remember your snacks. Yes, I do love the cool canopies one. I think that is great. And feel free if you want to create yours and use summer and then make a new one and try to like challenge yourself to have rhyming lines or challenge yourself to make the whole thing go around. Some of you are going to be at one level of what you feel comfortable doing and the others might be at another level. So take it however you want to. I personally find that about at this level is a great spot to be. I think one word doesn't always quite give the descriptions we need. I think getting in the middle here where we're not getting too crazy um, is a good kind of happy medium to be. Let me just catch up in the text chat here. It is stupendous. Well done. Well done. So now it is your turn. You're going to come up with your own acrostic poem. It can be a simple one word per line format or it can be one of the more detailed. So you can do one word, you can do multiple words or sentence, you know, make them into sentences. You can use punctuation, you can use rhyming, or you can make it go all the way around, right? And kind of weave in and out as one word or paragraph, okay? Try to include figurative language if you have a longer one. So for example, when we did summer, right? Yeah, it was the surrounding sticky right? We had the alliteration. Use some metaphors if you want to. Use um, onomatopoeia. It's a good one for um, uh, for acrostics because you could even, you know, if you can think of an onomatopoeia, you can use that as your exciting sound noise and then you can describe the rest of it. So it's kind of an easy way to get a word that starts with that letter. All right. So it's going to be your turn. In case you are devoid of topics, uh, there, here are some that you can use. And when you type them up, yep, Miss pa Miss Padlet, Miss Blosser put the Padlet in the text chat here. So that is the Padlet where you are going to post your poems and then feel free to come back and share your poems as well. So you'll be able to share or we can look at Padlet together. That's probably going to be our best yeah. bet. We, yeah. sc we screen shared last week. So I figure we'll keep okay. an eye on it once everybody's good to go. Uh, we'll, we'll screen just... share the Padlet. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And if you, are, now do you have comments enabled on the Padlet? Yep. Okay. So, you know, if you get done, you can either do another one or you can go in, you can comment like, I like the way you did such and such and comment on some of your classmates work as well. You could, it might get lost in the text chat, which is why we built the Padlet out. So even if it's short, you may want to put it there just so that you can get comments. Uh, Mrs. Dent and I will definitely hop in and make some comments too. Uh, so really right. throw them into the the Padlet there. That way you guys can, can see everything. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's just a better way to keep track of things. And then and, you can see. Uh, make sure that you label it. If you want to put your title first and then before you start your poem, do by, mine would be like Bridget B, uh, just so that we know who they're by. Because uh, I know that anonymous posting is on for you guys, but just so that we know, so that we can give you guys credit when we're right. looking at them at the end. Yes.
I think we'll do this for the next, what, 10 minutes or so, Miss Blosser? Sound about right for sharing purposes? Uh, I'm muted. I'm there talking to you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep, 10 minutes or so. Perfect.
me take another three minutes or so. Don't panic if you can't get yours out there and give that a try and then we can start screen sharing. Nice one, bro. Brother knows who I'm talking to. Okay, I am going to start sharing, but I do believe everybody can see um, the Padlet. However, if you would like to read yours, you're welcome to raise your virtual hand and read yours out loud. If that helps in expressing yourself, sometimes the way we pause and the way we say things are different than the way the um, poet has intended for us to hear them. So sometimes when it's out loud, it, it takes on a different meaning. So you can try that, um, but I am going to share it. I did not do one, Miss Bosser did, but I felt like I did a couple already throughout the presentation. So I didn't want to take over and do another. So I'll leave that to you professionals. If I can. Mm. 
if you're having difficulties, well, I nah, we'll do we'll do this. Well, cause <laughs> I, yeah, because uh, sharing. Just let me know if you can't see what I'm sharing, because that's the trick. Can you see the Padlet? Yeah. Okay. Because I can't come back over into the classroom. Okay, so we certainly had there was a lot of anonymous, but curious if anybody wants to say who did. Well, Courtney? they have their OKW. Uh, yep, Kanaya. Okay, what about in? Oh, I didn't see that one. Okay, was that just added? Maybe. Yeah, I just added that. Oh, okay, thank you. That one's really good. I, they're all great, and they're all so different. They're all, you know, even you know something that's more simplistic. Um, you took, you all took time to make them a longer piece, and I like. I actually was going to say the same thing you did, Miss Blosser, with the um, or yeah, for intrusive. Um, I liked that there was one line that connected. That was kind of cool. I thought that was interesting. It def definitely kept me on my the edge of my seat. It made me a little nervous. Does anybody want to share thoughts about other people's poems, things they liked, things they thought were cool? Feel free to hop on the mic. I don't want to be the only one chatting here. So actually, I'm going to come back over into the... No, I'm not. I lied. Lies. I can't come back over into the room. You can. I will share my screen instead. And then you there can we come go. over because I have three screens today. Oh, normally I do. I feel crazy without mine there we go okay there that way you can go. see the chat perfect yeah such a wide variety too i love miss blossers because the anime one very she relatable and she elevated that one for sure took it as a personal challenge there <laughs> I wanted to make it relatable like, for Mrs. Dent. Thank you. It helped. Very. Intrusive is a very good one. I do not know who wrote that one, but it's so deep. Sarah did. It's oh. a very wonderful one. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Spectacular. Nothing else said. What's, um, if you all are poets and poetesses, or those of you who really love poetry, you know, and, and do it regularly already, what's your favorite type of poem? Hi, I guess. I'm sorry. The one we did last week was my favorite. The haikus. Yeah, I like those too. Well, They're one of probably my favorite. favorite. Anybody else? Have a preference. Sonnets. Those are good. Those are hard to write. <laughs> they are. They're our last week. So it'll be a lot of fun talking Ms. about all the different types. Miss Blosser loves a good sonnet. Mm. My favorite are villanelles, which are horrendously difficult to write, which is why I like them. All right. Well, if nobody has any more commentary, um, you really did an excellent job. I'm impressed. And like I said, I'm used to some of the younger kiddos and they always have cool things to share as well, but it is interesting to come to a, um, an older group who's really into what they're doing. Um, I don't have a play. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you. I was going to say I don't have a playlist anymore. I got you. Thanks. Uh, no, you're totally fine, Haley. Uh, and we had a question, what are sonnets? So sonnets are a type of poem. They really came into favor uh, during Shakespeare's time. Shakespeare is very famous for writing sonnets. Um, they were popular before. There are the Italian Petrarchan sonnets as well. Um, and so they all have the base same formatting. But for them, what's really important is the rhyme scheme that Mrs. Dent had talked about. Um, and the different types of sonnets all have different types of rhyme scheme. Uh, so if you hop in that last week with us, we'll talk about all different kinds of rhyme scheme and iambic pentameter, which you can also find mm -hmm. in the Elizabethan sonnets. Absolutely. Um, 
Kanea, you had a question? Yes. Um, Miss Blosser, do you know who's going to be at the high school lunch bunch? I will be there. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> um, time. I gotta look at... It states that on the board, right? Yep, it's at 2 p.m. Eastern time, I believe. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm definitely going because I already signed up. We'll be happy to see you. Yep, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. The 17th, Sarah. All right, so that wraps it up for today. Thank you all so much for um, being such good participate uh, participants. I had such a good time and I thought what you came up with was really great. So I'm glad that that can be added to the Padlet. Next week, April 19th, 3 p.m. Eastern time, same day, same time next week. Limericks, also one of my favorites. I do love a good limerick and they follow a very specific rhyme scheme. And also syllables are going to be important with limericks as well. So they are so fun. I love them. Um, don't forget to email your poems from this week to the anthology. So make sure you do email them, right? Miss Blaster, the Padlet's yeah. not going to count for that. Yeah. And that's student success at keystonehighschool.com. Thank you, friends. Thanks for coming. Hope you have a nice rest of your week and a fantastic